This is a production of Cornell University. So, now that we got that out of the way, let's actually talk about infiltration. Okay, so water moving into the system. Okay, how does it work? Okay, infiltration is energy water of water moving into the, so into the soils. We come up with what we call the infiltration rate, which is the rate of that water moving into the system. It's basically the depth of the water entering a soil in a given amount of time. Centimeters per hour, inches per hour, inches per minute, whatever it happens to be. Okay, so imagine I have a time zero here. Here's my soil surface and I have a water column. After one hour, this amount of water moved in. After two hours, this amount of water moved in. I have a height change and I have a time and I can figure out the infiltration rate. Now, there are a lot of influences on how that rate is or how fast that rate is. It's sort of an oxymoron saying rate and fast at the same time, whatever. Okay, the first is the height of the water. The higher the water above the soil, the higher the potential, the gravitational potential, right? So if I move it higher and higher and higher, I got more potential pulling it down. So it's stronger flow. Okay. The number and the size of the pores. This makes sense. The more pipes I have and the size of those pipes are going to have a huge influence on how fast that water is going to be moving into the system. Make sense? The water content of that soil. How much water is already in the soil is going to have huge influence. If my soil is already saturated, I don't care how much water I'm putting into the system. I can't get any more in. It's saturated. Okay? So that water content is really important. How about this? What happens if the to soil is totally dry? In some systems, that would actually make the water move in faster. And in some systems, that would make the water move in slower. Let's go back to the pot, the planting analogy, the pot. When you guys put, uh, often the, the soil media that you put into pots is like a peat moss. Okay? If you guys put peat moss in your soil and then added water to it, what happens to the peat? Sort of floats up and floats away. Right? It's sort of a, it's, it's, it, it takes a while for the water to get into it. But once that peat starts getting wet, and then I start pouring water in it, the water just pours in. Does that sound familiar to people? Okay. So the, 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 the nature of that material, the nature of the material and the amount of water that's in the system is going to have a huge influence. Okay. Let's go to a sand or a, uh, a silty system or a loamy system and it's totally dry. I start watering it. I'm going to have lots of gravitational pull. But it turns out that in that kind of scenario, I'm also going to have matrix potential pulling it in. Well, why? If my soils are dry, they have a really big negative, a large negative potential, which means they're going to be very attractive to water. So they're going to suck in the water on top of the amount of gravitational water. Okay? So often, when you add water to a dry soil, you'll get a rate curve that looks something like this. Okay, so here is rate, here's time. Okay, so rate or speed over time. Okay, certain depths. Okay, I start adding water. Okay, initial rates are going to be very high. But with time, that rate is going to start dropping and then it's going to equilibrate. Why? Well, it turns out that this part of the curve, psi g and psi matrix, are working together. They both want the water to come in the system. Somewhere down the line, though, psi matrix is going to be satisfied. Right? Does that make sense? At which point, the flow rate, this rate right here, is strictly going to be right, you know, sort of right here is strictly going to be gravity. Soil isn't dry anymore here. It's wet. Does that make sense? Water is only being moved through the pipes. It's not actually being sucked in and held on the sides anymore. So the height of the water column, the nature and number of those pores, the amount 
of water that's in the system, and also the nature of the soil surface. Same soils. Go out and take a look at the ag quad. You guys have heard me mention the, the, the desire lines before. Okay. It's the same soils. But in one case, we've been walking on top of it. What's going to happen to the surface of the soils? They're going to get compacted. The pipes, the number of pipes are going to be probably about the same, but the, the size of those pipes are going to be dramatically reduced. Okay. How about I have an oil spill or something like that? Some, God, you know, we have some, somebody went out there and spilled some oil. The oil sets on the surface. What's going to happen to the surface? It's going to basically be sealed. Or if it's not sealed, it now has an oil covering on it. Does oil and water mix? Okay. So the nature of that surface is going to have a huge impact on how stuff is infiltrating. From a management sense, this we can manage for. A lot of these other things we can't manage for. Or we have limited ability to manage for them. Okay. So the examples that we have at the bottom, sandy soils, large pores, open surface, really rapid infiltration rate. Clays, silt loams, slow infiltration rates. Why? It's the nature of the pores in this case. The pores are getting smaller. If the pores are getting smaller, the amount of water that they can transport is slowing down, and the matrix potential of that entire soil is increasing. So it's going to hold it up against gravity more and more and more. Does that make sense? Initially, both of these are going to be moving fairly fast. This one's going to slow down rather quickly because the only way it's going to move through, I mean, imagine I've got a big pipe versus a, you know, a huge pipe versus a big pipe versus a small pipe. Which one of them am I going to be able to transport water down faster? The bigger the pipe, right? The sand's got the bigger pipe than the silts and clays. Make sense? Okay, questions so far? We good? All right. So infiltration rate, what in fact is it? It's basically the hydraulic conductivity over or multiplied times the potential over some distance. The hydraulic conductivity is basically a soil's ability to transport something. It has to do with the size of those pipes, for example, okay? and the connectivity of those pipes. All right? Times the change in that potential. So if I have a big water column versus a small water column, I have a change. Okay? If I have a dry soil here and a wet soil here, I'm changing that potential. Delta D change in, uh, delta X, I should say, delta, the change in X is basically the distance traveled. If I'm traveling this far versus this far. Okay? Or this far versus this far. Okay? So that hydraulic conductivity is just a measurement of the characteristics of that soil to conduct water. It's a function of the soil water content and the size and distribution of those pores. Sands are going to have higher co hydraulic conductivity than a clay, for example. Make sense? And that's how we determine our infiltration rates, how quickly that water is going to get into the system. You already looked at this one, looked at that one. So let's get some real examples here, OK? This is a double ring infiltrometer. And basically what it is is, is two metal rings that basically serve as, as, as dams. You pour water into them, and you watch how fast the water moves into the system. There's some problems with them, and you guys are going to be using these later in the semester. But basically, if we do double ring infiltrometer measurement, in essence, what we're doing is we're pouring water in with a ruler, and we're watching how fast the water disappears okay? over time. Okay? And if we put that double ring infiltrometer, here's the time. Here's the rate. And we look at that in a variety of different soils, a loamy sand, a silt loam, an expansive clay. You get curves that look like this. Do these make sense to you? Certainly the flat line here, the loamy sand is certainly going to infiltrate faster than the silt loam, certainly more than the expanded clay. We already talked about this part of the curve because this is where matrix and gravitational potential are combined. This is just the gravitational potential. Does that make sense now? Yeah? Go. I would say expansive clay starts with a higher rate than like the silt Imagine that, do you remember the soil tour when I talked, the, the, my soil taxonomy, safari, you know, like the vertisols. Okay. Huge cracks. Oh, okay, yeah. 
I start pouring water on these huge cracks, the water's just gonna gush down there. But as that water gets in there, the clay is gonna start expanding and those cracks are gonna disappear. Does that make sense? That's a good example of a dry soil versus a wet soil. Dramatic change. Okay, surface and the dryness and wetness. Okay, though in that case, the dryness has a little less to do with matrix potential. That's just a big hole. Okay. All right, questions? We good on this one so far? All right. The same applies to the soil aggregates. Now, you saw these. This is just basically we're talking about the entire media, but let's actually talk about the aggregates themselves. You've seen this slide before. Okay. We have a number of very large pipes here. Okay. And these individual clods in here, these are individual aggregates. Okay. Certain points, the points of these aggregates are closer together than over here. And so as a result, we have large pipes that are transporting air and water, in this case water, but we also have these smaller straws that are holding that, like, much like the straw that was sitting at the bottom of your Coke glass, holding that water. Now the other thing that you don't necessarily see here is this aggregate has lots of little straws in it, even smaller than here. So the aggregate itself is also holding water. So imagine the initial wetting event, okay? No water in this system at all. I start pouring water in at the top. What's gonna happen? The water is gonna go down those large cracks, and if it's going down those large cracks, it's gonna also be up against these smaller cracks. The water is gonna get sucked into them. Fast rates of infiltration. It gets sucked into these, they're then going to get sucked into the micro straws that are down here. I mean, what happened to my sponge as I wet it up? <laughs> Sucked it up, right? Initial stages of infiltration, fast, really fast, because I've got water moving down this way, but I also have water moving in here, and I also have water moving into these aggregates. Sooner or later, the aggregate's going to get satisfied. Sooner or later, the surfaces are going to get satisfied, at which point the water's moving through the system only through the pipes. Make sense? Infiltration rate in a nutshell. Any questions? There's a lot of material there. I understand that. This has been a production of Cornell University. On the web at cornell.edu.